Hi there, I hope you are doing great today. Today we are going to take a look at this guy. It's a 2016 MacBook Pro and we are going to see how it performs running a lot of VST plugins in Ableton Live. This is just a fun little test to see how, uh, how, how it responds with adding more and more tracks. And this will also be uh, one of the ways you can kind of measure up how a Mac will fit into your workflow. I can already say that I have kind of tried this uh, a few years ago and uh, since I produce a lot of electronic music I use a lot of plugins and they are quite CPU heavy so uh, I do not produce music on this MacBook Pro but I can at least use it to produce a video and uh, use my PC in the back here to produce the music so but uh, just uh, for fun uh, let's uh, open it up let's open our Ableton Live and uh, see what it can do so the specifications of this Mac is a 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i7 it has 16 gigs of memory and Radeon Pro 455 graphics which are not really related to music production but uh, Anyways, this i7 CPUs have uh, four physical cores and with hyper threading, so the system sees eight cores, as you can see in the window here. Okay, so here I have one track loaded with uh, Serum. Serum have uh, the default settings, uh, 2x oscillator settings, and uh, other than that, it's uh, just a default oscillator with uh, no real changes here. So I thought we can just play back. No, uh, we have to check the project uh, settings here as well. It's 44.1, high quality and 512 samples, and it's using core audio. So we can just play this one back and see how the CPU meter looks like. Okay, looking good. Uh, no real change uh, up here uh, or down here. So what we can do is uh, I think we can open up Serum here and let's uh, add, uh, let's just uh, make a simple patch. Just play the track and uh, add another oscillator and maybe some, some release. Just to make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, let's uh, add uh, a filter as well here. Okay, as you can see here now the CPU there goes to about 5. Uh, let's add uh, effects and let's add a uh, delay. And just a little reverb. Okay, we went up to about seven uh, percent. Uh, I don't think this is a complicated patch, but we can we can add some distortion as well, just to try to make it a little little more angry. What we can do now is I think I think this is uh, kind could reflect a real patch in some way, uh, much more than just the default serum. Uh, when you open the serum and uh, don't do anything. So what we can do now is uh, I think we can duplicate, duplicate, <laughs> sorry, duplicate this one a few times. Then just see how the CPU meter uh, sounds uh, or looks like. Let's see if we have 10, 10 of these. Let's see if it's able to handle it. Okay, uh, I can hear, hear the audio playing from the Mac. I'm not sure if you are able to hear it as well here, but uh, it it sounds good. Okay, 
Okay, so 10 tracks, uh, no issue here with a basic serum patch. Uh, uh, again, if we begin to do stuff like, let's see if we take the first one here and we take unison to eight here and we take it to eight here and we detune it a little, let's see. So you can see it goes up when you use uh, uh, unison, it will uh, use more of your CPU because it's more heavy on the uh, calculations. And let's just duplicate these 10 tracks. Just make it 20. Let's see how that goes. No issue, no problem. Let's duplicate those to 40, 40 tracks. Yeah, that worked uh, well as well. Uh, no issues there, no uh, problems with uh, sound. Uh, let's uh, see if we can uh, get some more here. Let's see, I think we can take it up to 60. Let's duplicate those. Okay, it's 61. Okay. Uh, now I'm hearing uh, distortion in the audio. I can also hear that the fan is uh, ramping up. So 61 with uh, these settings was too much. Two oscillators, no unison, uh, global 2x little release and a few effects here distortion delay reverb let's take it down to 50 see how that works again i i know that this doesn't reflect a, a real a real project or a real workflow uh, it's only it's only just showing what happens if you if you use a lot of uh, VSTs. 50, let's see how 50 works. Okay, there was still a little, uh, little or crackle there. Uh, so let's take it down to 45. Okay, so 45 worked without any crackle. I think uh, 45 uh, was the limit uh, on, uh, on this uh, computer. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that this 2016 MacBook Pro is able to run 45 tracks of Serum with a basic patch with some effects without uh, having any issues. Uh, the fans uh, spin up and uh, it's get a, it gets a little hot, but uh, it's able to go through it. I realized that this is not a real world uh, scenario and it's not really a, it's not a, a real uh, project, but it's, uh, it's still a way to, to measure the performance of the computer. And um, when you load a VST and when you load a plugin, that's something that is very demanding on the CPU. Uh, Serum especially can be demanding on your CPU if you uh, increase the unison and increase the polyphony and also the quality setting under global. So it's a nice way of uh, testing that. But uh, of course, 
uh, a lot of tracks are compromised of many different different uh, different things uh, plugins audio files and so you have to see the whole picture uh, audio files are much less resource intensive so if you do a lot of recording uh, of audio on your Mac and just a few plugins that it should be no issue using a Mac for a music production. I have another video here on YouTube as well where I demonstrate how Logic Pro X works on a 2008 uh, MacBook. It's a Mac with a Core 2 Duo CPU so it's much slower than this one and on that computer I use a lot of audio tracks and when you use a lot of audio tracks it works just fine. So. Uh, I hope you, you like videos like this. If you do, please hit subscribe or press that like button. If you do, uh, it sends signals to Google that they should up this video in the search results. And that's, of course, very beneficial for my channel. So if you have the time to do that, it's highly appreciated. So I'll see you later in another video. Take care and goodbye.